we're going to take a step back from phonology and briefly go back to the phonetics contents that we studied last week. As you might remember, we saw how we can describe a consonant by essentially three coordinates, by its place of articulation, its manner of articulation, and whether it's voiced or not. We are now going to call these features, and we are going to use features to describe phonemes. So we're going to think of phonemes as bundles of different features that we can use to describe whether, for example, they are a stop, an alveolar sound, or whether they are voiced, or in this case, not voiced, voiceless. So let's say we have a consonant, that's what the C means, a consonant that was plus stop, so it is a stop, plus alveolar, so it is an alveolar sound, and minus voiced, so it's a voiceless consonant. And as we saw last week, a voiceless alveolar stop is essentially a T. So if a language has this phoneme T, it could be described as a consonant that has these features. So each of these little snippets describes a phoneme and contrasts it to other phonemes, as we'll see in a moment. The first thing I want you to do is to take a look at these five sounds. So we have two consonants here and three vowels here. Go and take and get your IPA table and try to figure out what these sounds are. Uh, please take a moment to go through the features and use that to identify what the phoneme could be. Please pause the video. Welcome back. So let's go through the consonants first. Here we have a consonant that is plus fricative, plus alveolar, and minus voiced. So such a consonant can be found in the IPA table by looking at alveolar, I'm sorry, at fricative, yes, alveolar, yes, and voiced, no. So that phoneme would be S. And then we would say that S is a consonant made up of these three features. Uh, the second consonant here is a fricative alveolar that is plus voiced. So it would only be the Z. Notice how the difference between these two phonemes is that one of them is minus voiced and the other one is plus voiced. So that one feature serves to distinguish between these two phonemes. Let's take a look at the vowels. So if we have a vowel that is plus high, plus front, we could have either of these two. And then we have the third feature of minus rounded. So it's something that is not a rounded vowel. So it can only be this one, E. How about we, if we had a vowel that was plus high, plus back, and plus rounded? It could only be this one, the phoneme U. And if we switched this uh, feature from plus to minus, we would have a vowel that is plus high, plus back, minus rounded. And this is, if the language had the phoneme, it would be U. Notice again how the difference between these two is that one is plus rounded and one is minus rounded. So phonemes are bundles of features. And phonemes can have the same features as other phonemes. If we have a group of features, I'm sorry, a group of phonemes that share features, we're going to call that a natural class. So for example, the sounds E and U share some features. For example, they share the feature plus high. And this makes these two sounds a natural class. What's interesting about natural classes is that, as we will see, as we uh, move on, as we go through the week, phonological rules are usually uh, written in terms of natural classes. So, for example, you could have that the sound is affected if it is in if it is next to a high vowel, or if, or if it is next to a front vowel. For example, these four sounds e 
U, E, and E could form a natural class where what they have in common is the feature plus front. Because as you can see, they're all front. And by the way, fun fact about vowels, you can see that we've been calling this a vowel triangle, but it's really more like a vowel rhomboid. And this makes it so that this sound, a, ah, is really more central than it is front. So the front class is usually reserved for, I'm sorry, the front feature is usually reserved for things that are clearly front, like e, a, e, e. But a language could say that this, uh, this one is front too, but this one, the a, ah, is usually thought of as being a central sound. What if we had these three sounds, n, m, and engma? They could form a natural class defined by the feature plus nasal quite simply because they're all nasal. How about if we had the sounds P, T, K? There's several things that they're, I mean, they're different in them, that are different in them. For example, this one is a bilabial, this one is alveolar, and this one is velar. However, there are things that they have in common. For example, they're all stops, so they're a plus stop, and they are all voiceless. So they're all minus voiced. So these two features, plus stop and minus voiced, are the ones that describe the natural class formed by the sounds P, T, and K. So let's try to put this in practice. So let's say we have these sounds in a natural class. What feature do these five sounds have in common? What feature do these other five sounds have in common? And what feature do these three sounds have in common? So try to find one feature that is common to these five, then a different feature that is common to these five, <coughs> and a third feature that is common to these three. And of course, you can use the table to help yourself in trying to find the features. Please pause the video. All right. So, let's see, all of these sounds have one thing in common. They are all fricative. They have different places of articulation. So this one is alveolar, this one's velar. They have, uh, they, some of them are voiced, some of them are voiceless, but they are all plus fricative. These five sounds are all plus voiced. They have different places of articulation. So this one is alveolar, this one is um, labial dental, for example. They all have different manners of articulation. This one's a fricative, this one's a stop, an, an approximant, a lateral. However, they all share the feature plus voiced. Finally, these three vowels all very visibly shall share the feature plus back. <coughs> By the way, here are a few additional uh, features that are used every now and then in rules. The liquid feature describes the class that includes the rhotics and the laterals. So R, RA, L. These R-like sounds are called rhotics, and the Ls are the laterals. And the feature that has that includes both of them is called plus liquid. There's the feature plus sonorant, which includes the rhotics, like Rs, the laterals, like L, the nasals, like M, N, N, Engma, and the approximants, like these two. Another very useful feature is plus coronal, which is everything around the alveolar bridge. So teeth, ridge, and then after the ridge. It includes uh, dental and interdental sounds like theta and f, alveolar sounds, and post-alveolar sounds like esh, for example. So in summary, Phonemes are made of features. They're bundles of features. And these features are going to be very useful, first of all, to define natural classes of phonemes, and because, nat because uh, phonological rules are usually going to use these features to describe an entire class of sounds. This is what we'll look at in the next video, where we'll look at a rule in German.